Hello YouTube. Let me show you some more things about the outer space exploration that you will not read in local media, but you should know about. For example, in the year 1990, astronauts and cosmonauts who returned from the Mir space station shared incredible details of their experience. During their stays in outer space, they managed to see a metal sphere to the porthole around which there were rings like the planet Saturn. The sphere rotated counterclockwise than clockwise, but the astronauts were most surprised not by the appearance of UFOs in the field of view, but by the fact that music was playing in people's heads. Moreover, uh, these were specific and unusual sounds. On Earth, they had never heard anything like this before, um, as well as after they came back on our planet. The Japanese astronaut was so amazed by what he experienced that he began to communicate with world musicians, but none of them managed to reproduce this masterpiece that came from nowhere. This phenomenon has received a fairly simple name, Melody of the Universe. Well, prominent Soviet and then Russian cosmonauts, Gagarin, Grechka, Leonov, Krichevsky, they told about it. American, European and Japanese astronauts have also heard similar sounds. But where did the music come from? An interesting hypothesis was expressed at the time by Soviet ast astrophysicist Kirill Butusov. By the way, cosmonaut Grechko later supported him. According to Butusov, the expert, the Earth is a living organism uh, that is part of the universal mind. The cosmos is a living accumulation of matter, and sometimes it starts singing. This is not so much a physical phenomenon as a metaphysical, transcendental one. Please see my video about Butusov, very unusual man very knowledgeable person and his ideas of the second sun. Find the link in the description to this video, please. Georgi Grechko was a fan of the movie Solaris. It seemed to him that the truth was hidden in that film. And as an ardent supporter of the living cosmos or living outer space, he believed that someday people would be able to learn to communicate with it, the outer space. Despite the fact that the cosmonaut had a technological education, he was a scientist, he had the impression that the universe sometimes communicates with people in outer space. Absolutely suddenly, astronauts begin to have incredible visions of landscapes that do not happen on Earth. They heard music they had never heard before and similar phenomena that defy logic. And you will find descriptions in my video, trust me. Um, I will, I've added the link uh, to, to the playlist with all the videos. Georgi Grechko communicated with many colleagues and shortly before his death, in an interview stated that many experience such events, that they are just afraid to be out of the system, meaning to lose their employment. And it has been rumored that from 1980 to 1987, six cosmonauts were suspended for life um, after they confessed that someone communicated with them telepathically. Scientists have only begun to investigate this phenomenon in the last five to ten years. Of course, there is no question of intelligent outer space in their study. They don't even consider it. However, in the course of another series of experiments, it was found that during serious loads and during a flight into space, um, you know, they are exorbitant and altered consciousness can open up. In this state, the brain spontaneously reproduces both visual images and sound hallucinations. Being in space, a person is under stress all the time which is why such phenomena can happen. It's just a theory. In practice, it can be anything. And perhaps Kirill Butusov and Georgi Grechka were really right, correct. The outer space is an intelligent being. 
Now, I want to tell you what Russia was planning in 2021 regarding the space exploration. Well, because of the invasion into Ukraine, I have no news about the latest developments. The Russian space agency Roscosmos planned to study the subject of changing the human body for deep space flights that year. Alexander Blashenko, executive director of the State Corporation for Advanced Programs and Science, told the Russian TASS news agency about this plan. According to him, research works would be opened on human transformation at the level of genetic engineering and cellular technologies, as well as on medical effects on individual organs. In particular, it was planned to create medicines that would allow the body to cope with the influence of cosmic radiation on the nervous system. There are already developments and temporary changes in the properties of rodent organisms. They are injected with a medication after which the body has superpowers for a while, he said. The Russian Academy of Sciences, the Institute of Biomedical um, Subjects of the Russian Academy of Sciences, the Federal Biomedical Agency and the medical institutions of the Ministry of Health of the Russian Federation were going to be involved in the research. The Roscosmos was ready to take research results for implementation. In, um, actually, in September of 2020, scientists talked about the impact of the long stay in space on the structure of the brain. As a result of being in weightlessness for a certain time, the distribution of white and gray matter in the brain changes. The ventric ventricles of the brain also increase, and there is more cerebrospinal fluid in them. Researchers believe that in this way the nervous system adapts and pays more attention to those areas of the brain that are responsible for controlling movements and feeling the position of different parts of the body relative to each other. Earlier, Russian researchers, together with colleagues from Canada, revealed the effect of spaceflight on the protein composition of blood. In particular, they found that the human body reacts to weightlessness as a disease. An immune system includes all kinds of protective mechanisms. I'm waiting for the updates uh, to this program if they become disclosed. And there is something else I want to share today. Yuri Glaskov, who was the pilot cosmonaut of the USSR, hero of the Soviet Union, said this. Is it possible to seriously talk about astronauts meeting with aliens? I do not know, but I think we will have to face the traces of other civilizations. By the way, there is one interesting hypothesis. 74 million years ago, there was a planet between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. It was an old planet, one and a half times older than Earth, but most importantly, organic life existed on it. This is evidenced by the composition of meteorites that fell uh, to Earth. Some scientists suggest that the evolution of life on this planet has reached its highest forms. There was a civilization there. Perhaps the explosion was so unexpected that none of the intelligent beings managed to escape and civilization disappeared forever in the vast expanses of the universe. On Saturn, a fragment turned out turned, turned one of the satellites backwards. The other, was, the other one was torn into many fragments, resulting in the formation of the famous rings of Saturn near Uranus. A fragment of the lost planet passed so close that an impressive piece broke off from it, which fell on the Uranus. The force of the blow turned it around. So now, unlike any other planet in the solar system, it lies on its side. The axis of rotation is practically located in the plane of the orbit. Finally, the kinetic energy of the lost planet dried up in the struggle with the gravitational forces of other planets and the Sun, and its fragment entered orbit, where the mysterious Pluto is still located. We come to the most unusual part of this story. 
the ninth planet of the solar system, Pluto, is the main part of the lost planet. And everything we know about Pluto today agrees well with this hypothesis. Now, to this I will add. Please see my video about the ruins of ancient civilization on Pluto and the source of this incredible information. Now, as far as the cosmonaut, Yuri Nikolaevich Glaskov, who passed away in December of 2008, was a Soviet Air Force officer and cosmonaut. He served as a flight engineer in the Soviet Air Force before being selected as a cosmonaut on the October, on October, in October of 1965. He flew as a flight engineer on the Soyuz 24 spacecraft. He retired from the cosmonaut squad in January of 1982. After Soyuz 24 mission, he was awarded the title Hero of the Soviet Union. In 1974, he was awarded the degree of Doctor of Technical Sciences, and in 1989, he became the first deputy head of the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, from which position he resigned in May 2000. He knew things. When such people talk, listen to them. I already presented information about the Pavel Popovich knowledge of the ancient planet and what and the fragments and what happened to it and, and the basis we have here on Earth and where they are and so forth. Please, you, you will see it. I don't need to repeat it. And I'll bring you more information as this. If you can support my research, please find the links in the description to this video and please tell others about my channel. I'd like more people all over the world to find out Soviet, Russian and then Ukrainian and other uh, information about UFOs, aliens, space exploration and similar subjects and I will bring more including Chinese developments. So thank you for your support.